Heavy hockey, emotional hockey, Lozy, and one that uh, ended up going to the league office uh, after the game. And I'm watching it, and Petrangelo, obviously, a ton of emotion uh, towards Drysaddle. I, I see this slash. And, you know, my first thought is, what's the big deal? I, I'd see three of those out of Kevin Lowe when he played. <laughs> Maybe, maybe not quite so obvious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think the, the nurse one, it was hard to avoid, although it wasn't really a terrible instigator, you know, but he did, he did have his gloves off before he went in there. I think the league probably had no choice. Be interesting to see what they do with Petrangelo. Cause although I don't think he hit him all that hard, I think just the, the optics doesn't look very good for the game of hockey. What he did, I, I don't know what he was thinking. He obviously was trying to send a bit of a message, but I don't think he picked the right stage to do it. No, he's um, he's been an interesting guy for me in this series because he's obviously a talented guy, an important guy for Vegas. But, you know, how much credit do you give Evander Kane uh, for getting under his skin? The guy seemed to be playing hockey on tilt a little bit here. <laughs> Well, Evander, I mean, he, what a what a blessing he's been for the for the organization since he's come to Edmonton. He, he's exactly Jason what the, what the team needed um, a guy that could play the game at a high level, could also play on the edge a bit, play a physical type of game, and and uh, you know he's he's taken some penalties in this in the playoffs that he probably regrets, but but overall uh, he's given the Oilers a new dynamic that's uh, really given the organization a look like they can win a Stanley Cup. You know, Lozy, with your six Stanley Cups, uh, uh, you know this as well as anyone, but maybe you can reiterate to the to the listeners, I mean, that, that fine line between sometimes uh, pushing and, 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 and not pushing and biting your lip and turning the other cheek or taking a number or waiting for a better opportune time to, to equal uh, or at least... Uh, send a message and that has to be a constant this time of year. Does it not? It, uh, it no question. It, it was, um, it was one of our golden rules of the playoffs, you know, initiate, do not retaliate. And it, and it's, it's tough, you know, when you, when your reaction is that you're, you're in a high pressured moment and it's physical and some guy gives you a cheap shot to not want to lash out at the person, but, but the consequences can be just so darn devastating for the team. And you learn that over time. You know, our, the golden rule is very simple. Get the puck out, get it in, finish your checks, initiate, don't retaliate, and stay out of the penalty box. And when you have talent, you know, like the Oilers do, you play a good system and you abide by those golden rules, it's, it's a recipe to win a cup. Well, you know, you don't want to be taking penalties against that Edmonton Oilers team. Uh, what an unbelievable power play this year. Over 32% in the postseason. I think they're still at about 50%. What do you see that makes them, I know McDavid is out there, but what is it that makes that power play just so unbelievably unique? Well, yeah, if you compare it to the, the Oilers of the 80s, it never got to that level of, of production. I would say the biggest discipline, uh, the biggest difference is discipline. When I say discipline, I mean it, it, it's their, their power play is very choreographed. Uh, you know, they have a bunch of selections that they have. They support one another greatly. They never try to, uh, they never try to throw any um, sort of gambling passes unless it's for a scoring chance. So they rarely give it up. They they enter. I don't know what their percentage of entries with with Connor carrying the puck or Leon, but. Uh, they, they, they enter at a high percentage rate and they don't turn the puck over. And, and it's hard for the penalty killing team. You know, they, 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 they you know, they, they, they don't want to attack them because they don't want to get out of position. So they have to be a little more passive and eventually they're, they're, they're going to get a good shot option. And they now with Bouchard hammering the puck the way he did, uh, Tyson Berry was a very good power play quarterback for the orders, but he didn't quite have the shot that Bouchard has. And now that's another option that, that's just, you know, taking them to another level. You know, the other thing for me, and we, we, we watched a pretty good power play all season long in Toronto, but it's, it's the ability for me that I see the Oilers of, of disguising and, you know, much like anything else, if you have a tell, uh, you, you give an opportunity 
to your opponent to read it and maybe get a jump on it, whether you're a goaltender or someone that's going to block a shot. But they're so they're so good at uh, uh, disguising their next move or their next pass or the next shot. Yeah, the, 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 no question. I mean, you got you got Dreisaitl and and uh, Connor McDavid. You know, two of the best players in the world. And then and then you you know it's a step down. It's Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who's a who's a darn good player in his own right. And then you got Zach Hyman, who's a perfect net front guy who gives good screens, can play the bumper. You know, can bang in a a rebound. Uh, and then now Bouchard on the point. It's, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's a devastating group, no doubt. And they, they, they've obviously, you know, they're, I mean, I doubt we'll ever see these kind of numbers again. I mean, they're just they're really at a, at a level where they've, they've got total comfort with one another and they're, they're playing with house money now, you know, they, they go in and, and there's, there's not much pressure on them to have to, I mean, they could go uh, 0 and 20 and still have, maybe one of the best power plays in the history of the NHL in the, in the playoffs. So uh, not that they want to, you know, not, not that they're going to do that or anything, but they're, they're just really got a lot of mojo right now. And it's fun to watch. Kevin, I, uh, I think, you know, my dad is Bob Bourne played on the Islanders teams back in the day. And, um, you know, we were talking about this Leafs team that we're watching all the time. And he said, you know, one thing it reminded him of with the superstars is that when all Al, Al Arbor wanted to do when their team played the, the Oilers was beat the hell out of Gretzky. He said that was the only thing he cared about our team doing um, when they would get in those finals and trying to make life hard on the superstars. I, I wonder if over your time with the Oilers, you have experienced seeing all stars like Gretzky or whoever struggling a little bit in the playoffs, maybe some media backlash. Like it's, it feels like it happens to a lot of the great players. It gets harder and maybe they don't produce the same rate at first before breaking through. What, what are your thoughts on, you know, these guys kind of going through that process here in Toronto? Well, first of all, your dad was a great player. He was a big part of that, that those championship teams and, and, uh, I know all too well it takes it certainly takes the stars, but it takes players like your dad to win four cups in, in, in four years. Um, and, and he's, he's right. Um, yeah, no doubt. Uh, the, the good teams uh, in the playoffs target the stars and uh, you know, it all has to be done within the, the rules of the game, but that there's much more attention uh, put on the stars and um, you know, they got to learn to suck it up. They got to learn to, to play a little heavier hockey. They got to learn to, to uh, you know, even seen Leon a few times in the playoffs, dry saddle. He's, he's retaliated, you know, and, 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 and that's the worst thing you can do as a star hmm. is because then, then the other team knows they have you. So uh, I saw it happen a lot to Wayne. I mean, I saw it happen to Wayne as a teammate. And then I saw it, happened to Wayne as an opponent when Essa Tickenham was chasing him all over the ice when he played for the Kings and we played for the Oilers. But, uh, you know, it never, the, the great players find a way. At the end of the day, the ultimate goal is the Stanley Cup. And, uh, you know, they've really got to keep that in mind when they play. And just, I mean, I was, you know, listen, I'm not cheering for the Leafs, but I was happy to see them win last night. I was happy to see Martyr score a goal. They're great players and, and, they're, they're learning on the fly and, 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 you know, uh, I, I, I hope that they can have success. I'd love to see an all Canadian final. Oh, there's a few people under this roof. That'll probably <laughs> That'd go over well here. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> here as well. Losey. Um, speaking of the Leafs, uh, we were talking being down three, nothing, and then having that extra day to maybe just recuperate a little bit more and, and come up with, uh, you know, maybe a, another day of, uh, thinking about what needs to change going into game four. I kind of related it a little bit to our Stanley Cup final when we were up 3-1 and then found ourselves 3-3 and we had the extra day off um, and what it meant to maybe even a guy like you. Well, it, it meant a lot to me because I was 35 years old and <laughs> it just played, we were playing in our second game seven in back-to-back -back series. Yeah, it made all the difference in the world and and I, I think it'll be helpful to the Leafs, no question, to give them time to, you know, digest the win and, and not, you know, and, and forget about it and get rest up and rested up. I mean, uh, you know, I believe they're the better team. You know, God bless the, the Panthers. They're playing lights out. But um, I, 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 I'd, I'd put big money on the Leafs winning tomorrow night, and I think that the, the extra day off will help them. 
Last one for me. Just want to get your thoughts on Leon. You mentioned him retaliating, but um, just a guy who rises up in the playoffs, statistically up there with some of the greats in terms of points in his first however many playoff games. Um, have you seen, how do you compare what he does in the playoffs to some of the great playoff players of your own playing days? Wow. It's yeah. What numbers he has, you know, he's only second behind Gretzky just ahead of Mario Lemieux. Whew. And if, if there's anything you can be proud of is performing in the playoffs. And uh, I mean, he's doing it so unbelievably, you know, he's a big strung guy. He's a fiery guy. And um, you know, I think the knock on players, the, the bigger players, I think of Frank Mahovlich and, you know, big, big stars in the past that sometimes in the regular season would be, you know, the, the fans would get on them a little bit about not maybe looking like they're not giving it their all, but, uh, uh, and I'm not suggesting that Leon does that, but, you know, sometimes he, he seems to be a little disinterested in a regular season game, but mm-hmm. uh, he certainly knows playoffs. I know he wants to win a cup bad. And uh, I mean, the numbers are uh, just, I mean, they're ridiculous, but uh I really hope uh, I hope these guys. I know they're going to come out tomorrow night in in, in Vegas, and and uh, it's going to be a great game. But I, I I think they're the better team, and I think they should go on to the semifinals. One more for me, Losey, before we let you go. Um, and you know, Hockey Night in Canada does a terrific job when it comes to uh, you know Maple Leaf Square and the Oilers watch party, where they constantly go out and they you, you see these massive crowds. And I'm just wondering what what that scene would mean to you and and if you ever envision seeing something like that maybe 25 years ago and what it means to the the community it, it's so fantastic for the community i mean the game of hockey you know as canadians we're we're so blessed to have it as as a sport that that the country's fond of i mean playoffs are always so exciting i remember as a kid you know sitting in the basement watching the montreal canadians and the boston bruins and uh, couldn't wait to go out and play a little street street hockey after the game, and and now um, you know watching it. I think you know even though we didn't have the big watch parties outside the building, you know I recall Kip. We we'd land at four o'clock in the morning from some U.S. city, and there'd be a thousand fans at the airport cheering us on. You know, as um, you know, Edmonton's always, of course, everybody knows about uh, the Leafs' world and the and and their loyal fans and. It's it's no different uh, out here in Edmonton. It's really good to see. It's it's growing the game. You know, when you get uh, not all the people unfortunately could can afford to go to the games or, or get a ticket because the demand's so high. But at least when they're around the building and they're feeling a part of it uh, in amongst a, a group at a fun time of the year, it's uh, it's really good for the game.